This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. 1. Las Vegas. It is February, and the air is so crisp and clean, it almost crackles. The temperature is below freezing in New York. It is raining in Los Angeles. But in Vegas, it is party time, as usual. On the ground floor of that monument to human indulgence called the Las Vegas Hilton, the salesmen from New Jersey and Ohio are lurching over blackjack tables, whiskey glasses in their hands. Their wives are addictively pushing quarters into the slots of the one-armed bandits. High above the casino, on the 30th floor of this giant hotel, in the Imperial Suite, the mood is somber, silent, and tense. Two husky men, their custom-made shoes sunk deep in the plush carpet, grimly survey the toyland spread 400 feet below them. Like a giant explosion in a paint factory, the lights flash convulsively, stitching a patchwork of madness that seems fitting in this mecca of insanity. Normally, the one-night standers below them in the casino would have given their eye teeth to be in that lavish suite. There is champagne in the refrigerator, Dom Perignon chilled to perfection. Exotic foods are on call every minute of the day and night in a town that pays no attention to what time it is when you want to eat, whether breakfast or a five-course feast. A few casual telephone calls can jam the suite with a who's who of the celebrity register and some of the most beautiful women in the country. But right now, Robert Red West, 37, and Delbert Sonny West, 35, would have done anything to be far from that suite. Anywhere. A hundred times before in that same suite, it had been different. They had enjoyed the parties, the celebrities, the pretty women, the booze, the laughs. From time to time, they allowed themselves a rare feeling of smug self-satisfaction. It wasn't a bad life for a pair of hicks from Memphis, Tennessee, whose only ambition when they left school had been to land a steady job. It hadn't been bad at all, going to opening nights, rubbing shoulders with millionaires and movie stars, men who slapped them on the back, bought them drinks, called them by their first names. It is different now. Very different. It is three o'clock a.m., February 19, 1973, and the party is over. The champagne stays in the refrigerator. Sunny and Red settle for beer. There are no calls to pretty girls or movie stars. As the two lift the cans of beer to their lips, their casual jackets hang open, and the tool of their trade peeks out from the leather holster each wears on the left side of his chest. A thirty-eight caliber Smith & Wesson revolver. They are crack shots. They are bodyguards to one of the most valuable human properties of the twentieth century. They stand silent, avoiding each other's eyes. Talk will only make it worse. It has been a bad night. The adrenaline pumps through their temples. Red and Sunny, who know too well the man propped up in a king-size bed in the master bedroom, realize the silence will end very soon, and the night is going to get a lot worse. Minutes, normally irrelevant in a town where the casinos ban clocks, tick away painfully. Then, the summons comes. The voice bellows from the bedroom. Sonny? Red? Sonny? Red? Y'all there? Sonny clangs the beer can down on the custom-made bar. Yes, boss. Here. Red chimes in. Coming. Coming in. They move quickly. In the massive bedroom, which is carpeted in lush green, stands a split-level platform. On the platform is a huge bed covered in dark green corduroy. 
It is a regal room. Kings, queens, presidents, and prime ministers have slept in this bed. The occupant can survey the domain of the bedroom and the panoramic view of the city below.